So now the Sunday School Short. Today we're in 1 Corinthians 12 through 14, walking through the New Testament chronologically as it happened, as it was written. Uh, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 4. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit is the source of all of them. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so that we can help each other. So it's not to be boastful of anything, I can do this or I can do that. No, it's to help one another. Some examples of these are wise advice, uh, special wisdom, great faith, healing, performing miracles, prophesying, discernment, speaking in unknown tongues, interpreting tongues. Uh, there's one spirit that distributes all of these gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should have. Verse 11. Paul gives an example of the human body and relates it to the church here. So he's, he's just mirroring the human body, giving some imagery to it, the church. Okay, there's one body, but there's many parts, and it's the same way with the church. If you think you're less of a body part because uh, you're an ear rather than an eye or a foot than a hand, uh, well, if the whole body were an eye, he says, you know, how would you hear? We all have a purpose in the church, in your local church that you're involved with. If you're not, today's Sunday, get into a local worship. Uh, there's pastors, there's teachers, there's people that work in parking, uh, greeters, there's administrators, people that work in the children's department, and many, many, many. God is calling you to, to what you love to do, plug in to that outlet in your local church. Each is equally valuable, okay? Verse 22, in fact, some parts of the body that seem weakest and least important are actually the most necessary, okay? So it's not the pastor that drives the church, just like we've said before, here's the church, here's the steeple, open the door and see all the people. That's the, the church is the people, okay? Verse 26, if one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. And if one part is honored, all parts are glad. Paul lists off some of the parts of the church and in saying that uh, we can't be all of them, but to earnestly desire the most helpful gifts. Okay, so don't just seek out to uh, bring a name for yourself. Seek out to be the most helpful. Seek out those gifts that will be the most helpful. And in 13, he continues talking about these gifts, yet mirrors them against love. If I could speak in the, all the languages of the earth, but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong. And he goes on to talk about other gifts, and uh, but without love, it would be nothing, essentially. And I'm just going to read for you verses um, 4 through seven here. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable. It keeps no records of being wrong. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. Verses 10 through 12 say something like this. When the time of perfection comes, that's the end of your days or the end of days, uh, we will see things with perfect clarity. We will uh, know everything completely just as God knows everything completely. God knows me completely. Verse 13, three things will last forever. Faith, hope, and love, the greatest of these is love. Chapter 14, let love be your highest goal, but you should also desire the special abilities the Spirit gives you, especially the ability of prophecy, okay? For if you speak in tongues, people won't be able to understand you, but the one who prophesies strengthens and encourages strengthens others, encourages them, and comforts them. Okay, in prophecy here, I don't want you to think of just speaking on future events. No, everyone that stands up and proclaims the word of God is a prophet in some sense. The main purpose is to convey God's message to people providing insight, warning, correction, and encouragement. Just like we've talked about in... Um, 
Timothy, where the, the letters to Timothy that Paul says, you know, God's word or scripture is God breathe, useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training. So if you're speaking the word of God, if you know God's word, if you're a daily Bible reader and you're speaking that to others, you are also exercising the spiritual gift of prophecy. Paul compares speaking in tongues versus prophecy. He says, even a lifeless instrument like a flute or a harp must play notes clearly or no one will recognize the melody. And he says, a, a bugler must, um, if he gives the wrong note or whatever, he sends out the wrong melody, that people won't know whether to come to fight or whether they're being called to dinner or go to bed, whatever. Um... Verse 9, if you speak to people in words they don't understand, how will they know what you're saying? See, people in the Corinth church were using speaking in tongues as a sign of spiritual superiority, and it was creating disorder for them in worship. And Paul, in verse 12, says, Since you are eager to have the special abilities of the Spirit gives you, seek those that will strengthen the whole church. Paul says that, he can speak in tongues better than any of you, being the people of Corinth. But uh, in a church meeting, I would rather speak five understandable words to help others than 10,000 in an unknown language. And 14 ends speaking of orderly worship here. Verse 33, for God is not a God of disorder, but of peace, as in all the meetings of God's holy people. Women were speaking out... Um, which was outside the custom in Corinth of that day. It's not necessarily applicable to the, the full revelation of the Bible, which promotes the value of women completely. And the Bible's promoting of women and the value of women is counter to ancient Near East custom. It's counter to ancient Near East writings and even uh, of the Western world we see today. Ultimately, Paul is saying in verse 40, be sure that everything is done properly and in order. Like, subscribe, and share if this is a blessing to you. Get into God's word with me. God bless you.